Hello? Hi, good afternoon. My name is Jason Curtis. I'm calling from South Africa to do an interview with Nick. Right, yes, that's me. Hello, Nick. How are you? I'm not too bad. Yourself? No, not too bad. Thank you. It's good to, to get to speak to you, I must admit. Yeah, good. Congratulations. Um, are in order, I'm sure, uh, once again for the new album. Yes, thank you, yeah. Yeah, you... I'm very pleased to have got it out. Good, good, good. Now, this is hardcore, right? Um, it's a sexy title. Would would you call Pulp a sexy band? Um, no. <laughs> I wouldn't call Pulp a sexy band at all. If you've seen Jarvis in his underpants, then you would know what I mean. Uh, uh, sex is not a word that would come to mind. Okay. Um, probably emaciated pigeon would uh, more likely come to mind. But, um, so we're just, we're just kind of a, uh, a, uh, a ragged bunch of misfits, really. That's probably the best way to describe Paul. Um, I think it, it's, it's nice to be regarded as, uh, if people do regard as a sort of sexy group, mm. that's very nice. It's kind of a, yeah, um, defying, defying all odds of nature. But, um, <laughs> when you're on the inside, it doesn't quite look as, as, as glamorous as perhaps when you're looking from the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, um, since sort of about 1995, really, um, Pulp has sort of grown, you know, in, in sort of mass popularity, I think, to become somewhat of a, a ho uh, you know, a household name in the UK and now in the US as well. Um, what do you think it, 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 it was that was the catalyst sort of in, in, in breaking the band, you know, to the vast sort of mainstream? Uh, um, I, I'm really not sure. I mean, I... I, I I've thought of, uh, quite a few times about what if there was one particular uh, thing that, that kind of tipped Paul on on some sort of road towards success, but I, I can't really um, I, I really can't put my finger on one particular thing. I think it, it was probably um, the sum of many many different things all you know, very uh, gradually sort of, sort of coming together. I mean, trivial things perhaps like um, Jarvis deciding to wear contact lenses rather than wear his glasses. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, quite a few of us moved down to London for a while. Mm. Uh, you know, that would have had something to do with it. You know, perhaps the actual audience changed. Mm. Perhaps, uh, perhaps we were just conning ourselves to think that that um, Pulp were making good music and perhaps in the reality it was all crap. Mm. And that then, then all of a sudden uh, Pulp started making good music. Um, I don't know, I think it's just, you know, one of many, many things, uh, well, sorry, sorry, uh, a, a, a combination of many things coming together. Mm, mm, mm. Very, difficult, very difficult to say. Right, right, right. Now, um, the last tour that you did uh, for Different Class um, seemed to sort of take strain on the band, you know, to the point of, uh, um, I remember reading about the gig in Paris where, you know, the, the band walked off and you, you actually had to go out and sort of pacify, you know, the crowds. What actually yeah. sort, of, sort of happened there? Well, it was um, it was a very strange day, that because uh, um, all day there'd been this huge rally in in central Paris because there'd been sort of a, a general strike almost, and there was this uh, and, and the marchers went past the venue, and we also went out and sort of mingled with the marchers. So it was a really good atmosphere, mm. you know, but. It, it, Sort of, uh, over the years, the French have had a kind of a very militant sort of um, attitude uh, and when they go on strike. Mm. You know, they do it for real. Mm. They, they do go on strike and they will uh, you know, paralyze the entire country until something happens. Mm. And it just seemed that this day there was this great, almost like kind of a revolutionary sort of fervor. Perhaps we will get a bit of highfalutin ideas about it. Mm. And, and I mean, touring does take you strain. I mean, uh, Kind of you're, you're out partying all night and, mm. and you have to play concerts and do interviews and things like that. And one of the first things that kind of gets sacrificed is sort of sleep and things like that, and, and, you, and mental health deterioration, <laughs> bodily functions start packing up, things like this. Uh, and there is a great strain, and, mm. and it just sort of, it just kind of uh, comes to sort of a head on that, that that concert. I mean, we've played a really good concert. And a lot of the audience had to, you know, we had saw his people walking for sort of like 10 miles because there was no transport because of the strike mm. to get to this concert. 
and um, we played a concert and uh, basically we didn't do a, a we weren't coming back to it. It wasn't a case of walking off. It was, it was really a case of not coming back to do an encore that the, the audience were clamouring for. Okay. Because uh, uh, Giles had a bit of a uh, kind of uh, trashed his, his amplifier because he, he couldn't hear what he was singing. Okay. Because uh, his kind of voice was going down a bit. Mm -hmm. and, and we didn't come back to the song because it looked like the audience might turn a bit, uh, you know, a bit nasty. Yeah. Because you know, it, it, it had been a great gig, but we just weren't able to do an encore. So I, uh, I sort of volunteered myself to go out <laughs> and say to the audience, you know, not, of course, you know, we didn't want no. to go away thinking that it, we weren't quite back because we thought, you know, they weren't being a very good audience or mm. you know, we, were, we weren't playing because we didn't like the, the Parisians or something like that. Mm. So I just went and it was, it was a very nerve-wracking uh, moment, I must say. But, uh, sure. I, I, I play the drums, I don't... <laughs> you got had a way. ...on my department, you know. <laughs> yes. So uh, I just sort of said, yeah, I'm sorry, it's not your fault. We just are unable to come and play uh, any more songs. And um, that was it, that was it, really. I mean, touring does... does take a lot out of you. It, yeah. it, it, you know, we had been on the road for quite a long time. And, mm -hmm. yeah. and are, are you ready to do it all again? Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's strange, we've just, um, we've just started to play a few, few uh, not concerts, but we did a TV show in Paris the other day, mm. where we played a couple of songs. We played uh, six songs at uh, the album launch party in London the other mm. day. Mm. And it was, it was kind of a bit nerve-wracking because we didn't know whether we liked it playing uh, concerts that mm. much anymore because obviously you played that many concerts on the last tour he was kind of um, yeah, it, it had you know, deteriorated mm. everyone's uh, you know, abilities mm. so it, it was nice to kind of just put the foot in the water and mm. see how see what it was like and everyone's really, we've all really enjoyed these you know, playing these few songs so uh, we'll look forward to our first uh, few concerts coming up in uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, w w what's interesting is um, in between albums, you've included two, uh, well, you've included tracks on Velvet Goldmine and also a track for Great Expectations. Um, yeah. Is, is that sort of something that you wanted to sort of see yourselves doing more of? Do you, do you like the idea of, of contributing to these? Uh, yeah, it's nice when, I mean, it's always nice to be asked. I mean, you have to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, invited to contribute uh, a track for mm. the sort of film. You can't say, we've got this song, it's great in your film. <laughs> yeah. it, 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 it is nice, you know. Uh, mm. Especially the one for Great Expectations was uh, uh, especially interesting because we were given a videotape of a particular scene from the song mm. and they said, will you do a piece of music for this scene? Because mm. uh, usually you just kind of say, can we have a song? And you kind of root around in the... In the in the in, in the bin mm. and see what you've got lying around. And say, oh, here's one. You can have this sort of thing. Mm. Whereas this, we could actually, you know, uh, tailor our songwriting to what was happening on the screen. Mm. Mm. So, we, so in the rehearsal room, we set up a video and we set up the TV and we played the scene and we just played music along to it. Mm. And it was a really good way to do it. I mean, it did it did help matters that it was the scene where uh, Gwyneth uh, taking her clothes off. <laughs> that helped. That did help. Well. I think we. Tape got worn out by the end. <laughs> Suddenly inspired, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> it was very inspired, yeah. I mean, it, was, it was great because um, you know, the director and the musical director came down, they were just expecting to hear a cassette of some music, mm. and we took them into the rehearsal and actually played the song mm -hmm. while watching the telly with the scene, and they were going crackers again. It was great. Great, great. Because now, also for um, for the new album, you're doing an hour long film. Um, that's right, yeah. Which is which is interesting, is is because it, it would definitely seem that pulp are sort of venturing into the world of uh, you know celluloid as well as music. Um, have you got a you know is is there a theme? I know you did it with the last album as well, where you um, you know for yeah. or rather for his and hers, uh, you did you did uh, clips as well. Is that something over and above the music that you actually like getting in yourselves involved in? Yeah, well, mainly it's uh, it's kind of Stephen and Jarvis. It's uh, sort of hobbies really I mean they both went to film school mm. and so they, they, they've always been quite interested in, in fanning around with the films and things like that mm. um, and it, it is nice to uh, to be able to, uh, to have another side to the music as well you know, talk about the sort of more of the background mm. uh, ideas we've been into some of the songs and uh, it, it's good it's 
it's good promotion, yeah. Mm. I mean, I, I've got a, a great deal to do with uh, what's happening with this hardcore film. I've seen mm. a little bit of it. Mm. And, uh, mm. and it's just kind of talking about talking to various people who've been involved along the way. Mm. With one or two things. Right, right. Talking about their sort of take on things. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but yeah, it's interesting. We're obviously going to, this spring as well, before we go touring, he's making a film for, for Channel 4 in Britain. Yeah. About, um, about outsider art. Yes. Yeah. There's some people who, who sort of have, seem to have this strange calling to, to build things or make art without mm-hmm. having any formal art training or any, anything to do with art before. It's, mm-hmm. it's very interesting. Mm. It is, it's an interesting subject he's going to go to. Yeah, absolutely. All around Europe and places. Yes. Good luck to him, I say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But now, what's interesting to me is, and you did it on the last album as well when you released Common People. Um, Last October, you released Help the Aged um, ahead of the album. I mean, you know, obviously quite a few months before that. Um, yeah. And both tracks obviously appeared, you know, are, are, will have appeared on both albums. Um, yeah. Is is that sort of a conscious thing, you know, for you to like put that out, get a feel, you know, for, for you know for what people are, you know, if they're ready for, you know, for the balance of the stuff that's to come. Uh, yeah, in a way, Help the Aged a very rare beast that it was actually written while we were on tour, mm. uh, which is uh, quite unique. Um, and we, that was the first thing we recorded, and it did seem as if it, if it was going to be uh, a kind of a, a bridging song almost, because it, it seemed quite similar to some of the stuff on different parts. Mm. And we knew that for the new record, uh, we wanted to make an album that was different to, to different parts. Mm. And we thought, well, if you want to get to help the age now, mm. show people that we're still alive. Yeah. And to sort of say, okay, uh, we've got a new album coming out eventually. <laughs> it's going to be different from the one before, but yeah, you're going to be able to still see kind of, um, sort of a, a thread running through it all. Mm. And, uh, mm. It's kind of yeah, it's kind of priming the pumps in a way. Mm. Mm-hmm. And and when as say, well, Jan January last year when 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 Russell left the band. Um, you know, you know, did did that affect the way you know you put the new album together? You know, after after he had left the band. Um, yeah, it was kind of uh, kind of strange. It was just a case of, uh, sort of I suppose the five of us having to uh, kind of fill fill the gap that was therefore made by Russell's departure. Mm. I mean, it was kind of strange at first, not having him sort of uh, back in the corner. you released uh, Help the Age that you you took over a few radio stations as well which yeah. I thought was rather interesting whose idea was that? Um, I don't know really just in case of people ask uh, if I'm doing it uh, and it's, it's a good idea I mean, it's a good laugh playing yeah. records on the radio yeah. uh, so you know we just kind of it was great on especially doing it we, we sort of covered for John Peel for a for a week while he was on holiday. Yeah. I mean, no one, he had never asked any of the groups to do that, so it was quite a good honour. Uh-huh. And um, we had a good laugh doing it, you know, we got the beers in and, uh-huh. and, and brought some uh, some records and just generally enjoyed ourselves. Mm-hmm. Good fun. Well, I mean, this is something between between everything else, you know, you'll, you'll never be out of a job between the five of you, you know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so looking at the album, uh, the new album, um, again, um, would would you classify it as a mature album? I know it's, it's sort of a tacky thing to say, but it's it, it's been classified as that, you know, because you know, um, taking away your sort of suggestive title for the album, the music which underlies that is is quite the opposite. Um, you know, um, was 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 that intended, or was that sort of just the way the album came together? It really just the way it came. I mean, uh, nothing was. We, we didn't sit down and start. Like, right, this new album's going to be 
kind of uh, heavier, a bit darker kind of thing. It's just, it's just how it turned out, you know. Mm. And because uh, we didn't, when we started out, we didn't, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't even know whether we could write the songs anymore. Mm. We kind of lost the ability. Mm. And, and luckily, we kind of found it in a few sort of in the dark. Mm-hmm. And we got there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's, it's never easy. It's never mm-hmm. easy, but uh, we got there in the end. Because sorry, go on. what would you um, or, or what, what would the band um, like to see sort of happen? You know, with this album. With, with, you know, where would you like to see this album take you? Because obviously, the albums up till now have taken you to a certain place. Um, uh-huh. Where would you like this album uh, to go? Um, well, <coughs> there's no point in putting records out that you, that you don't think are going to be successful. I mean, uh, I mean uh, uh, in, a, in a craft way, we just yeah, we're striking to uh, keep pushing Paul Font to sort of uh, higher levels, I suppose, and, and keep uh, keep our sort of um, validity within within sort of people's consciousness. Mm. You know, sort of um, keeping sort of that. To, uh, finger on knowing what other people want to, want to hear, mm, mm. that kind of thing. And, mm. and, you know, we'd like to use it to be able to go to uh, um, countries we've never been to before. It'd be nice to come down to South Africa. Would be, yes. We'd like that. Yes, we'd uh, like that too. Actually, <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if anything's uh, been uh, penciled in, but you never know. Yeah, yeah. It's was very nice. It would be rather, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Because I mean, do, do you find it sort of getting more, you know, the, well, the pressure, um, you know, um, of of having to sort of succeed. You know, the bigger you get, um, you know, the more focus there is on you, and and the quicker somebody is to sort of point a finger and go, ha, you know, it's not as good as the last one, or you know, they tend to become well, a little, bit, yeah. Yeah, people are always, you know, uh, especially in the, in the British music press, wanting to. Uh, see you fall mm. and, and see people uh, sort of, um, uh, kind of fall on their own sword kind of thing. Mm. Um, we've sort of been expecting that and it's, it, it, it hasn't really uh, materialised just yet. Good. Um, and there was rumours that everyone was, had heard that you know, this new album was uh, you know, going to be a load of rubbish. Mm. But thankfully, I think uh, they've sort of, so far, mm. the, the, all the critical reviews have been pretty good and, and I would say that you know, yeah, we're there producing a, a record that uh, hopefully will stand the test of time. Good. Good. I mean, it's, it's quite sad, I suppose, that that is the way uh, the kind of British music press works. It's very much in the case of build them up and knock them down. Yeah, it is strange maybe, that. Yeah. Maybe that's just, you know, I mean, Britain has got a, a, a very, very vibrant music scene. Yes. Maybe that's one of those. Uh, reasons why it's so bad because people don't um, they don't suffer people hanging around with crap music very long. Mm, mm. You know, they'll, they'll, uh, you know, the first sort of I suppose uh, inkling that their music's not as up to scratch, mm. then they will you know, bin them off and say crap. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll get some new kids in. Yeah, yeah. That's why it's so 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 uh, such a good thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Nick, could I ask you to do one last favour for me, if if I could? Um, I, this is going to be going out on a show called The Cutting Edge, um, which is uh, sort of syndicated all over the country here. So you'll you'll uh-huh. you'll be speaking to about three hundred and sixty odd thousand people. Um, oh, good. So if you want to, as I say, um, you could if you could just say hi. This is Nick from Pulp, and you're listening to The Cutting Edge, something like that. Right now. Whenever you're ready. Okay. Hello, my name's Nick. I'm from the group they call Pulp. You are now listening to The Cutting Edge, and be careful, it's really sharp. Excellent. Thank you very much, sir. I do appreciate it. No problem. But congratulations That's again. okay? Yeah, it's the second congrats. Yeah, no problem. Good, good luck with it all. And um, we'll yeah. be, we will look out for you, and uh, we'll hold you to... Uh, to, you know, to coming out and, and hopefully giving us a show down here at some point. I know it's difficult. Yeah, we'll love to. Yeah. Lovely. Okay, Thank you. Then. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye now. Bye. See ya. Bye.